Okay, so if you're taking any math course like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, generally uh, second year algebra courses and beyond, you may very well encounter a problem like this. So we want to go ahead and solve this without using our calculator. Now some of you don't even know what's going on. You're like, I've never seen this before and I don't want you to run away from this video just because you, you know, maybe you, uh, you're not yet in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus. No big deal. You're going to find out that you know what's a uh, kind of simple explanation a little bit of instruction you too can understand what's going on here and the topic that we're discussing is what we call complex and imaginary numbers okay complex and imaginary numbers basically the same thing in mathematics we basically have number systems and most of uh, you up to about the algebra one level we deal with the real number system but you know it kind of comes to a point in time where you're studying a little bit more advanced math like Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, where we, we're going to need some additional numbers called complex numbers. Let me go ahead and just give you a quick example of what a complex number is or an imaginary number, and that's what we're discussing here. If I said x squared is equal to 16, x squared is equal to 16, well, what is the answer? How do I solve for x in this equation? Well, this is what we call a quadratic equation. All I have to do is take the square root of both sides, and I can see that x is equal to both positive and negative 4. Because 4 times 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16. So no problem, right? Now, most of you are like, oh yeah, I get that, Mr. U2 Math Man. Not a problem. Make your point. Well, I'm going to make my point right now. So what if we had an equation like this? x squared is equal to negative 16 x squared is equal to negative 16. So you're like saying, oh, okay, well, let me take the square root of both sides. But if you went into your calculator and you don't have, let's say, just a basic calculator, go ahead and try to take the square root of negative 16, okay? Let's suppose, probably like on your cell phone, if you're using your cell phone, or just some sort of basic calculator, if you plug this in, you're likely going to get some sort of error. Your calculator might start smoking and shaking around, so be careful. And that's a little bit of a joke. I know it's a, you know, it's a math joke. I, try to, I have to try to be funny because we are discussing mathematics. But anyways, listen, your calculator doesn't understand how to do this because your calculator primarily thinks in real numbers, real number system. Now, if you have more of an advanced calculator, some scientific calculators, definitely like a graphing calculator like the TI-83 or 84, it will give you the correct answer. But to get the answer to this, the square root of negative 16, we need to work in the complex and imaginary number system. So this is what we're dealing with here. Um, I is what we call an imaginary number. And we're trying to figure out uh, I to the 30th power, I to the 30th power. So that is the problem. And of course, you could do this in your calculator if you have one of those fancy calculators. But I'm going to show you a nice, effective way to figure this out without a calculator. And this is very important stuff for those of you who are at those uh, respective math levels I just discussed. So if you think you can do this problem, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct uh, answer here in just one moment. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through this step by step. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I can tell you right now, all of you can be successful in mathematics. I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Who cares if you failed a couple of math classes? You know what? That doesn't, you know, the past doesn't necessarily have to predict the future. To be successful in math, you basically need three things. One, you need the desire to want to be successful. Two, you need encouragement, okay? You need someone that's going to lift you up, hopefully have a great, uh, great math teacher. And the third thing you need is great math instructions. You know, like math instruction, you actually understand, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for, something with the math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, GRE, GMAT, there's a ton of tests out there, teacher certification exams, etc. Or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses in all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description, but you need to be taking your own awesome math notes. If you um, are not good at note taking, don't be too tough on yourself. Just start taking notes and try to improve. Note taking is a skill. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
and that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this right now. And if you want to kind of like say, you know what, let me use my calculator. For those who, who do want to know how to do this in a calculator, if you have a calculator like a TI-83, TI-84 graphing calculator, you can find this little I button. Okay, you just have to search for it. And then you'd use your little caret button right there and you'd plug in 30, hit the equal sign, and you'll see the correct answer. But let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. All right, I to the 30th power is equal to negative one. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right without the aid of a calculator, well, that's very good. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face in A plus A 100% and a few stars so you can celebrate your awesomeness in mathematics. Nice job, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into this, I to the 30th power. But before we do this, let's just take a look at a problem. This just has numbers, okay? Instead of this uh, imaginary number. What if I said two cubed? What is two cubed equal to? Well, that would be what? Two times two times two. And two times two times two would be eight. So two cubed would be equal to eight. But what if I gave you this problem, two to the 30th power? What is that equal to? Well, that's gonna be a lot of multiplication of twos, right? So if you wrote out 32s, you'd probably break it up like, okay, 2 times 2 times 2, that right there is going to be what, uh, 8 times 2, 16. You know, you'd kind of like try to find a system, some sort of easy way to do the problem. You're looking for patterns, and that's precisely what we need to do to figure out this problem. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so I to the 30th power. Let's just figure out, first of all, or define what imag an imaginary uh, number or component is, because technically an imaginary number, for those of you that are studying complex numbers, is A plus BI. This is the real number part, and this is the imaginary number part. So I'm not going to get into all that right now, uh, but what we want to do is just define, for those of uh, you who have not seen this, what I is equal to, okay? I is equal to the, uh, the square root of negative 16. Now, let me just quickly go back to this problem. Remember the square root of negative 16? Uh, I'm sorry, I is equal to the square root of negative 1. I think I said negative 16. I is equal to the square root of negative 1. So let's go back to this problem here, the square root of negative 16. Check out uh, how cool this is to have this imaginary number. I can rewrite this problem as the square root of 16 times negative 1, okay? Hopefully you know the rules of square root and uh, square roots, and I can now pull these um, factors apart. So I have the square root of 16 times the square root of negative one, and by definition, the square root of negative one is i, and the square root of 16, I can write that as positive negative four or just four, so this would be four i or plus or minus four i. There is the answer, okay? So this is the imaginary number answer to this problem, okay? So this is why we need to know this stuff. Because if you're, you know, maybe at the algebra one level, or maybe you're not taking math at all, and you want to have a little more context of what we're doing, this is, you know, hopefully a nice little illustration of what's kind of going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, this i. So i, by definition, is the square root of negative one. So what would be i squared? Okay, we're trying to find some sort of power of i. So i squared would just be this squared, okay? Uh, the square root of negative one squared is just negative one, right? The square root of negative one. Anytime you square something with the square root, uh, the, basically the square root falls away and we have negative one, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now let's move on to, so we had talked about i squared, and, uh, so we have i, i squared. What's i cubed? Well, i cubed, we can write that as i squared times i to the first, right? When we're dealing with powers, if I have x squared times x to the first, where we multiply powers with the same basis, we simply add the exponents, this would be uh, x cubed, okay? I could do the same thing with i, i squared times i to the first. Uh, if I add the exponents, it's the same thing as i cubed. So what is i squared equal to? Well, we already figured that out. That's negative one, okay? And what's i? Well, i to the first, what's just i, or the square root of negative one? So i cubed is the same thing as negative one times the square root of negative one, or negative one times this right here is just i. So i cubed is the same thing as negative i, okay? Let's take a look at i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth I can express as i squared times i squared, because again, I can just add the exponents. I'm multiplying two powers with the same basis. i squared again is negative one. So this would be negative one times negative one, which is one. Okay, so you can see here, 
that, you know, for each iteration, each power of I kind of have to manipulate it, but I'm, you know, I'm looking for patterns here. So let's go ahead and look for a pattern using some properties of exponents. And all of you out there, by the way, taking algebra or even pre-algebra should uh, know this rule. And let me just kind of review it right now. If I have X to the 10th power, I could write this if I wanted to in a different way. I could say X squared to the what? What would this outside exponent be? Well, it could be five, right? Because five times two is 10. So this is gonna be the key, knowing this property taking a power to a power is uh, gonna be the key to making this problem very easy. So let's go ahead and see how we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so here it is. So we have i to the 30th power. So what we wanna do is find a power of i that we already know, an easy power. So we know what, the, what i to the first is. We know what i to the second is. We know i to the uh, cubed. We know i to the fourth. So let's just go ahead and put this as i squared. So I could say I could think of i to the 30th as i squared to the 15th power, right? Because 15 times 2 is 30. So writing it this way has real advantages for me because I know i squared is equal to negative 1, right? So let's go back up here to our little chart. We already figured out that i squared is equal to negative 1. So now this problem becomes negative 1 to the 15th power, all right? Now, let's go ahead and start looking at powers of negative 1. So here is negative 1 squared, which would be what? Negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. And uh, this 2 is an even number, okay? What about negative 1 uh, to the third power? Well, that would be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This is positive, that's negative, so it's going to be negative 1. So you can kind of continue this pattern on until you're satisfied. But here's the deal. When you have an even power, uh, negative 1 to an even power, the answer is positive 1. When the, uh, the exponent is odd, okay, and you're taking a power of negative 1, the answer is negative 1. So just looking at this, we have 15. Uh, that's odd, so it's going to be negative 1. And, of course, you could write out a bunch of uh, negative 1s to kind of you know satisfy that this is, in fact, correct if you are in doubt. But you want to look for patterns, okay? This is how you make you know, calculations much easier, right? And you need to be able to work with, you know, these kind of shortcuts when you are manipulating, you know, expressions like this. So, you know, again, uh, this is, you know, like pre-calculus algebra two level mathematics, but, you know, you can't do this problem unless you really learn this stuff, you know, like in pre-algebra and algebra one, these uh, basic uh, properties of uh, rules of powers and exponents. So math, to your surprise, is indeed connected, okay? You just can't, you know, be like, oh, here is uh, elementary school, uh, you know, all that arithmetic. Now I get to use a calculator in middle school, so I'm going to forget all of that. And then in middle school, here I'm taking algebra. I don't need to know this. This was like easy math. Listen, it's all connected, right? And that's why it's important to, um, you know, take notes and, and uh, do your homework and stuff because none of this is going to go into your long-term memory uh, unless you practice. Okay, you have to do mathematics and do a lot of it, uh, make a lot of mistakes, improve, figure out what you know and don't know. And uh, this is the true process. So nobody learns math perfectly the first time. Very, very, very few people learn math that way. It's typically a process of, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing work, you know, making mistakes, improving, asking questions. But the general trend will be like this if you do not quit and you have access to great instruction. And then, of course, you're doing all the right things like your homework and taking notes. Okay, so if you need help with uh, complex or imaginary numbers, if you were kind of checking this out, if you want to learn more about this, a couple of courses I would recommend, uh, probably my Algebra 2 College Algebra course. And for those of you who are math superstars, you can check out my pre-calculus course as well. And also I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on complex and imaginary numbers if you're interested. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.